Hello, good evening, happy June, and a very happy Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee. God bless the oh, God, the queen. I was going to say the king. I've been watching too many medieval programs lately. God bless the queen. If there is such a god, may he bless her. What a wonderful weekend it's been. The first couple of days in the June, we've had a, a, an absolutely wonderful week of beautiful weather. And literally, just before the show started, uh, it's just started to spit a bit of rain. If you're in the south of the UK, like the whole south of the UK, we're about to have some really bad weather coming our way. It's a weather warning, so just be careful. But it has been a wonderful week, um, and it's been a wonderful end of the week. And it's like the Jubilee. That's a really big deal, right? Um, anyway, my name's Danny. It says it right down there at the bottom of the screen. And this is Easy 8 Online Painting Club. Um, if you are new here, this isn't a tutorial show or anything like that at all. There's loads of that already out there. This is merely a social club where you can come along, join in the guys over there in the live chat, and, and me, of course, and just kind of get your hobby stuff painted because I've got mountains of stuff unpainted all around me, uh, and this is a good way to kind of share the time and kind of get those things painted and whatever. Um, we're not just here on YouTube, we're also on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we're on Discord as well. So if you fancy sticking around at the end of the show today for a little while, you can join me and the rest of the community uh, and come over for the Easy A After Party on Discord. All links to all the other platforms that we've got are all down there um, in the description of this video. So if you like what we do, maybe like us, maybe follow us, and, and definitely subscribe because every little bit helps me make the show bigger and better. Um, and I certainly have a wonderful time doing it, and it really helps me having these couple of hours every week really helps me kind of crack on with hobby stuff that I just wouldn't get done and I've, and I've been doing the hobby for years and I've just not got anything done for ages that's why it's all kind of piling up around me um, and I don't want it to I want it to be painted it is absolutely stonkers hot in the studio again uh, this week like it has been for the last few weeks because I suppose summer is is pretty much here I do have a massive turbo fan going on a minimum setting beside me I might have to crank that up I can see my head's getting shiny already I've been in the studio five minutes um, so if you can hear it do let me know because it might be disruptive and I don't want it to kind of impact negatively on your time here on the show <clears throat> anyway uh, I'd love to know what projects you're doing, so if you are painting something this evening, do let us know. Uh, go, just drop it in there over in the live chat, or you can find us on Facebook as well, and you post pictures of what you're doing over there, and come and talk to us later on in Discord if you want to. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what it is that you're on. Loads of people have been doing loads of projects, and lately I've also had um, quite a few messages from the community um, asking for me to do like... Um, like show like you know just kind of like do like an info show on certain products and styles of painting and stuff um and it's not been the, the first time that's happened like uh, periodically every now and again uh, some people go like oh yeah this this is kind of like a craze or i've seen this can can you have a go at this and like i said just a minute ago it's not a tutorial sh channel however i'm more than happy to do that sort of stuff so if you want to see me do things um then then let me know because that's cool um uh, jeff says can't hear it hi jeff hi dad thanks very much um yeah cool brilliant because it I, I need it it's that warm um yeah if, if you want me to do um uh, little skits and things on certain products or techniques or whatever then i'm more than happy to give it a shot i've done a couple and literally just a couple of like little product reviews just because i was having fun at the time um and they've actually had quite a lot of views as independent little videos uh, more so than every episode um which is kind of cool I do run them at different times of the day. I just kind of fit them in my week whenever I can. Um, but I, I've got a little bit of time coming up now because I'm, I've gone back to school. So I, I've got, I'm in the middle of my exams right now. And within a week or two, all of that stress and pressure will, will be gone. And hopefully I'll have a really good grade. Um, so yeah, I'll have lots of time to kind of put more effort into doing little videos like that. So if, if you want to see like techniques and things, and I think that what I offer over other channels that are out there already is the fact that it's a live show and I don't want to do pre-recorded stuff because that stuff is so is so readily available out there so um, what I can do is I can have a go at trying to get it right and probably get it wrong and have a lot of fun doing it uh, and if by watching me you learn something either through my mistakes or through my successes then then great right like I'll, I'll have like a first shot at doing a, a plasma glow effect is something that people have been wanting me to like have a real good go at um you know object source lighting and things um, and i'm more than happy to give that a go those are the things i really want to venture into anyway um i've been saying for a while now i really want to kind of do some like um like skin tone topics and things um, and these might be really good like run along shows to so run alongside this show itself um i'll, I'll just kind of like program them in for a day if i'm doing like a little tutorial video or a review video i like to keep them under half an hour because 
you know 10 minutes is a good is a good time for a video but if you're doing it live you need time to like for things to take effect and you know to, to dry or to open the bottle sometimes <laughs> you, know, you need a bit more time than that um so yeah if, if you want to see that sort of stuff drop it down there in the comment section find me on facebook or, or just drop me a line um you know how to get in contact with me uh stafford says hiya sorry for being late no worries man i, I haven't even got my paints open yet it's absolutely fine happy jubilee if that's a thing that we say in the jubilee happy jubilee day um yeah well you know maybe it is it's now i've made it a thing <laughs> there you go so what am i going to be doing today i'm going to be doing some basing work on two of my really big tyrannies i've got my carnifex there we go and i've got my trigon um and, and they still have little bits to do on them but uh, i've been doing those bits on them for a while on the show and i in a in a bid to try and avoid repeating myself over and over again on this show and get boring um i'm not going to do that Today, I have been working on them, oh, the Trigon, over this past week, as I've had a bit of time, um, and I've kind of got all the darker grey bits in place. That's the bit that takes the time, so that darker grey has a real low pigment value compared to the other grey, so when I'm putting it over the black, it takes a bit more effort, and it's, it behaves ever so slightly differently than the other ones. So once I've got that dark grey in place, the other grey should be a bit easier to work with. Um, so today I'm just going to be basing, because um, I can do that and crack on with it, and it, it's just something nice to do. And I've got a few bits and pieces, materials and whatever, um, and I'm looking forward to having a good old crack. So what I'm going to do, without further ado, move over to the workbench, and hopefully this camera works, because two minutes ago it wasn't. Let's have a little look. Well, there's the bench. Here comes my hand. Oh, it's working. It's working. Fantastic. Okay. If it stops working or any quality drops, do be sure to let me know so that I can endeavour to fix it. Um, I'm going to have to take some water. It is that hot in here? I have also got a hairdryer with me today so that if I have to um, speed up drying processes on some of the things that I'm going to be putting on these bases, I'm going to be adding extra heat into the studio. Fantastic, right? Mm -mm. So much water has been drunk over the last few days. I must have gained like half a stone just in water. Anyway, here is my Karn effects and, and here is my Trigon. I've got a funny grid going across my screen. Let me just see if I can get rid of that. There we go. Now I can see things properly. So here is here is my Karn effects that I've painted some time ago now. And here is my Trigon right beside me. They've got really large bases on them. And because they're monsters, they, they're going to have larger bases than your standard miniature. Let's get a little Skitari guy in here so we can just kind of compare. Here's a little dude with a rifle. They are huge miniatures taking the mini out of miniature um though they have really large footprints so to speak on, on their bases because of the way that they are positioned with a trigon being coiled up like a giant snake and with the carnifex actually just kind of like being hunched over quite low it's quite difficult to get anything detailed really in there that here i've, I've actually only got a little bit of space to kind of put some stuff in before she swamps all over it and this one here because of the angle that you would generally be looking at the kind effects um anything that i put in here with a lot of effort it's just going to be covered over you should, should, should oh, i just dropped her she'll just be in your way does it make sense so i don't want to do anything like wicked i don't want to have like some serious dioramas going on in there i have on some of my other miniatures done like acid pool effects which i'm really happy with and I, as I've done more and more of these, I've got better and better at them. Let me just dust them off so you get the full effect. Um, here's my Broodlord, which I'm sure I showed you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, high gloss, um, and because I've put layers and layers and layers of it, it actually has depth through it as well. And I've got better at these uh, on my zone throws, which are actually packed away, unfortunately. Um, on smaller bases, this little um, acid pool effect is really lost. Um, so bigger bases would be you know, worth it. But I don't want to have these guys sat in big pools of acid. And I'm kind of, you know, th the amount of times I've done shorelines, it's going to be like all my tyranny is going to be dancing on the shoreline of a giant acid ocean. And I don't really want that. So I, I think for these two, I'm going to stay away from the acid pool effect. I might do that for a bigger monster, a, you know, the same sort of size as the Trigon base, perhaps, that maybe has a bit more space when they do something a bit more diorama style on there out of this world models and minis that is john takax hi hello 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 hi john thanks very much for coming along i'm so happy to see you coming along because john is all the way over in the united states um, i hope you're doing well my friend uh, thanks very much for coming along and taking the time out of your earlier day to come and join us um so yeah i've i've got lots of materials and stuff with me um and i'm just going to kind of 
just start putting stuff down and see what happens. I've got some Agrelin Earth, which is a technical paint from Citadel. Obvs says it on the front right. <laughs> uh, he says, I'm on vacation, so I can participate working on a squad of space wolves. Fantastic. Love to see some photos. My Agrelin Earth is pretty much gone uh, and, and dried up, but it's a really good paint. Some um, Citadel paints, no, they're not as good as like other brands out there, but they're, they're Earth, the cracked earth stuff is really really good um i've also got some agrelin badland which is like a gritty mud sort of texture stuff it's basically got sand in the paint i think same sort of color as this one ish no it's exactly the same uh, i bought this one by accident thinking it was the other one when i first got it but it has come in handy to like um do different types of textures and things um i've got crackle paint from green stuff world it's it's more affordable and it comes in a much larger quantity obviously um but it's not as effective as the citadel one you have to really really layer this on to get anything anywhere near um, the citadel stuff i've also got uh crackle medium from vallejo i've had a quick go with this um, it's clear, so you mix in whatever colour you want it to be, or you paint it on and then you paint over the top once it's all dried and cracked. Um, and this has got very fine cracks, um, almost like bullet through the windshield style splits. On the Trigon base here, because um, I had a, basically a large open canvas, I did try it. If you can see like a little, see a little glossy patch right here? I've painted over it now. I don't know if that really kind of shows but that, that is that is that paint. I just kind of put a blob of it down and see what would happen. Really, really fine cracks. So I've, I've yet to really find a place for this. I don't know yet. I've got to go play around with that and see what happens. Jesper, we love crackle paint. Yes, yeah, fantastic stuff. I absolutely love it. Uh, lots of advice out on the internet on various YouTube channels, Facebook forums, etc. Um, saying like how to enhance crackle paint is by putting PVA glue down. Um, some people are saying put gloss paint down. Some people say put it on, let it dry. Other people saying let it um, go, you know, let it st keep it wet, then put the paint in there. So I've tried lots of different methods. This is with it dry. Um, it does exactly the same thing. It just has come out slightly glossy. Obviously, I could matte that. Um, and this bit over here is where it, where I mixed it in with wet PVA, which is kind of poured it straight over the top, and it went horrible and gacky. Um, I've been playing around with lots of different textures. Yeah. I think that it's just good to have a good um, painted um, or textured surface to put it on. I paint all my bases black because when it cracks, you can see the splits right through will show whatever colour you got underneath there. And as I typically pay, paint greys and, and brownie greys for my for my sort of surfaces, I like to have a bit of black as contrast to show through. Um, yeah, I think I've really yet to work out the best way of getting good ground textures on my miniatures but i've got some large surfaces to work on today also for the Khan effects because i wanted something just to occupy the space in here just to kind of be cool without too much detail going on there don't be too busy i've got this little thing this is um like a little um infestation node from the gene stealer sprue and, and a couple of rule sets ago it was you'd put these down to mark where they were going to infiltrate within like within a diameter of rate range from this um they're not used in the rules anymore uh, but i got a whole um ton of them so i thought actually i would paint them up and just kind of put them on as like random bits of terrain uh i did paint it and i, and I ruined it because i rushed it so i stripped it down with some uh, alcohol and um i thought i could repaint that and put it in there and then do some kind of earth effects around it i've also got a little pot of cork bits of varying sizes so some dusty bits in there and some rocks. I really like doing the, the rocks with cork. You can get some really nice sort of shapes out of them. These bits of cork in particular are, you can see that they come from like a sheet. So they kind of got this very, very flat side on one side and the other there. So they're almost like a little roly poly bit of rock. So um, I do kind of shape them up with a little knife. But some good textures in there, some good features to kind of just scatter around on the base. I've also got a pot of sand somewhere, kind of mix of textures in there as well. And I just popped out the front of my house because the next door neighbour, sorry Adrian, <laughs> has a little flower bed, um, which he recently got rid of all the flowers and scattered a load of slates. And I thought actually for a really big base like this, um, there's some good um, sort of landscape bits of rock here. Just washed them off and disinfected them. Um, so they're good to go on and they might like make some really cool um, sort of features on the bases who knows 
I've also got, the list still goes on, a couple of types of resin, sculpting resin. Uh, this is Magic Sculpt, which is absolutely fabulous stuff, but I've, again, I've yet to really work out how to use this because every time I make it, even in the right ratios, it always stays pliable and sticky. Um, and I've ruined some things in the past using it. So I think I just kind of wanted to get these out of the drawer and just show them off a little bit. I think I need to work on how to use that, maybe mix them in with other polymer clays. And I also have Procreate, which is um, like green stuff, comes in two resiny blocks like you see in there. And it's really hard to work. Uh, it's, it's like really good for holding definition. Um, it makes your fingers ache after a good session of it. Um, and when it dries, it, it goes solid. Uh, so what I've done in the past with my little Hormagon models is I've done lots of tiny little like vines and twisted them all up and just kind of put them on a few of the bases here and there um, and then painted them bright red and kind of violated them down with a bit of wash. Um, and it's a really striking contrast colour to the yellows and the greys and they kind of stand out. And we all know by now that I'm a massive fan of HG Wells uh, and War of the Worlds is an obsession of mine. Um, and I really like the concept of the red weed. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely go pick that book up. If you're a good reader, uh, you'll read it in a couple of days because it's quite a small book. Um, but it's basically um, a, an alien flora, vegetation that just kind of overwhelms everything just by the mere presence of the aliens themselves. Tyranids in their kind of background lore are supposed to have um, their own sort of plant life and, and bacteria and you know, microbes and all sorts of stuff as well. Um, they over oxygenate the planet, makes everything that is um, uh, terrestrial to that planet, native to that planet, um, grow abundantly. So there's more stuff to consume because um, they're a locust, right? That's what they do. Um, but they also have their own plant life forms, which are carnivorous and they kind of overwhelm the population on the planet. Giant brambles, I suppose, Venus flytrap style things. Yump. Um, yeah, so I just kind of like the idea of this, like bizarre grotesque alien like plant form um so yeah little vines and things what i wanted to do with this one is maybe have like a pillar being pulled over by like lots of vines and stuff but there's there's not a lot of space without making it look quite over cramped on the bases so i'm just gonna go for something mild and modest and i say like these bigger diorama style bases i'll do on on other things or even tyranid style terrain features like pieces of scattered terrain because my 3d printer i've repaired it today is actually working so i can start printing um, better copies of things like this these are um uh, files from thingiverse which is a website designed for um, people sharing their designs a lot of them for free sometimes you can you might have to you know donate a bit of money towards the artist for it but these were very kindly um, put out for free and there were loads of different types um, in loads of different sizes. Uh, here's a little one by contrast. Not a very good printer, unfortunately, that one. And I kind of uh, primed it to see um, how well it would fill in the, um, the the gaps in between the, the lines. I rush printed these, all of them, because it takes a long time and you want a lot of scatter terrain, right? Here's a leaning version of the same one. Um, here's a slightly bigger one. Um, there's a lot of um, sort of support structures and all the little holes on the way up, and it takes a lot of cleaning up. Oops, easy. Uh, and it's a really hard thing to clean and sand because of its shape. So I have tried filling them with different types of um, sort of sculpting things. So this is just simple air drying dust clay and it hasn't done a very good job of it and it took a long time to get that done. So I'm still looking for the perfect thing. Gloss paint does work very well or just gloss varnish, but you still kind of got to sand it down a little bit to kind of work halfway really. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a combination of filling and sanding that will do the job. It's just a very difficult feature, the sand, because, well, look, it's, it's clustered in fine details, but they do look amazing. And those aren't the biggest ones I've got. Here's some of the bigger ones I've got. This is huge. This took um, 16 hours to print and I have two of them. I just kind of got this really cool recess in here. Uh, but some, you know, some layer lines. Uh, I rush printed them so you can see some faults in the printing occasionally but they look amazing um luke who sometimes kind of joins us on the show has said that he is uh willing to help me kind of get these um into a condition where they are nice and smooth and shiny so luke if you're watching i'd love to take you up on that offer mate because there's a lot of work in here and if you if you enjoy doing that sort of stuff i will post these to you i'm sure we've had this discussion before and i just never did because i'm lazy but i think there's some wonderful things here and i could make some nice diorama pieces with lots of cool plants overwhelming structures and people and stuff yeah 
wonderful stuff. If you're into making diorama stuff, I'd love to see what it is that you can do. So do send in pictures to Facebook. I'd love to see it. Cool. Paint colours then. I like everything to be greys and browns um, because it kind of shows a, like a bit of camouflage. Darren's joined us. Hello, hello. Hi, Darren. Thanks for coming along, mate. Hope you're doing well. Um, I like it to be grey because I like it to sort of like make the tunas look like they're sort of camouflaging. Though they are bright yellow. I just make I, I like it to look like they're sort of blending in a little. Um, like maybe they can't decide what they're, are they wearing a high vis or a camouflage jacket. No one knows. Um, but I've got Skaven Blight Dinge and I've got Storm Vermin Fur. And they this one's uh, kind of teetering on the edge of grey to brown. This one's slightly more browny. Um, so yeah, some nice colours to play with. The idea is that I want it to look like that they have almost won the battle because you know, hey, victory. And by having soil that looks like it's had all of its nutrients sucked out of it, um, and it is literally just something akin to what you'd find left on the on the moon, you know, that's kind of the the impression I was going for. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing some bits and pieces down, some slaty pieces, some bits of cork, bit of sand here for some texture, and then I'm going to start slapping some um, texture paint down. And then I'm going to start painting it. It's as simple as that. What I do want to do is get some paint on this bad boy because the yellow takes a little bit of covering. Uh, it, it's unfortunately it's quite a poor pigment yellow and the airbrush gives a good cover. Um, so I'm going to get that primed right now. I'm just going to put the airbrush compressor on. That's running in the background now. Um, just get a little piece of paper out. I'm just going to pop this bad boy here. Um, I have left all my blue tack downstairs after a game that I played the other day, which is a shame because I could do with blue tacking it down, but ah, whatever, I'll do it with my hand. Anything here? Anything? Nope, nope, nope. In a drawer here beside me? No. Have I got any tape? <laughs> no, I've got no tape. <laughs> my studio is so messy and I haven't got anything that I actually need in it. Weird. Right. <laughs> so, I'm going to prime it white to really help the yellow shine. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of wash from uh, Seraphim Sepia. And I think with the little tentacle things on the side here, I'll probably do those um, pink a little bit like the spore mines that I've done because, um, yeah, they look really cool when they're when they're done like that. Um, or maybe I could do them like red to like simulate the red weed sort of ideas. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Pink. Pink, I think, will be it'll pop on it. And they got some little claws or teeth in the top. I don't know. They're like little sphincters that maybe let things out, or maybe they kind of capture people, you know, from the feet. And staff says, "Sorry about the blue tack." No, 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 no. It's still downstairs. I've just, I just left it down there. It's, 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 it's fine. Thanks. It was a great game of uh, Gaslands we played the other day. If you don't play Gaslands, you should definitely have a go. Right. Let me get some uh, primer. I have some white primer somewhere. I've got some grey primer on the counter. Here's my white primer. Just Vallejo white primer. It's just really, really good. I Because I, I do a lot of bright colours, like yellow, white's really good. And grey for pretty much everything else. Give that a waz. I, I haven't done the graphic. My cameras aren't working very well lately. I didn't want to overwhelm them by having more on-screen graphics of waz popping up. But waz Just for you, Stafford. Definitely get some merchandise with Wazomatic written on it, shouldn't I? <laughs> okay, there we go. I'm not going to water it down or anything like that. I kind of just want a bit of a, a quick cover. Or like I say, you're not really going to be able to see this piece of terrain because of its location. So I'm not really all that fast. Oh, my primer's going to be a bit gloopy. I get a little pointy pokey thing here with a thin end it means I can hold it steady while I spray so I don't throw it around all over the table but for those of you that have just joined us in the last few minutes if you are working on something this evening do let me know um, and let the others know always nice to know what other people are working on and that you guys are working on something let's do this together let's get through our backlogs of stuff <laughs> what, what is wasmatic and then there's a little whirlwind gif i didn't even know 
little um, little emojis and stuff can come up on the live chat there. That is that's a that is a, an easy eight first. Uh, Jeff says you could try painting the nid towers with a PVA and then painting over that. I'm not saying it will work, but it will have to it will have to go see if it fills in lines. That's actually not a bad shower. I've got a few test prints here to give that a go on. I might give that a go in a bit. Maybe that's something for the Easy Eight after show, after party. Um, so if you are inclined to stick around after the show, come and join in everybody else on the live in, in the live video. You're welcome. And it doesn't have to be family friendly over there either. So if you want to come along and have a drink and you know get drunk, that's fine. <laughs> the show's family friendly, but the after party—that's what the after party is about, right? But if you do bring kids, we will keep it clean for you. Everyone should be entitled to come along to the after party. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty good prime right there. I've never actually painted real rocks before. I don't know if I should um, prime them with the airbrush before I glue them down. I should probably give it a go, shouldn't I? Let's do that. I don't even know if I'm going to use them yet. I've just used up all the paint. Where is it? There it is. Stafford says he's doing performance car for his Gaslands team. Doing a performance car, eh? I genuinely thought you were going to win that game the other day, Stafford. I thought it was a, a really good, fun game. Um, incidentally, uh, I, I won. But because it wasn't a part of the actual championship, interestingly, um, despite coming first, uh, I didn't get as uh, many points as some other people. Um, I actually came third in terms of the points gained for it. But it's still a cracking game. Absolutely loved it. Okay. Let's do this one here. The reason I'm priming it is just so it gives it something for the paint to, to adhere to when I start putting the colours on. I don't know how well it's going to be, how easy it's going to be to brush paint on. So giving it a little prime, I'm not going mental with it, should hopefully give it a little something in a minute. There's a little one. It's okay, my neighbour doesn't watch this show, I don't think. <laughs> if he does, sorry, I stole some of your stones, mate. Uh, Jeff says, I'm researching early Scottish croft buildings. Deep joy. What's a croft building? Is that like, um, like a, almost like a tribal hut or something? Like Celtic huts? Is it not Celts? Like Stone Age huts or Iron Age huts? That's Stone Age. It's not why. That wasn't as far back as I was supposed to go there. There's a lot to think about on a show. All right. <laughs> If I did shows like John's, <laughs> I would uh, be able to edit that out. Do you do much editing in your shows, John? Do you end, like, do, do you have like a, essentially a blooper reel? <laughs> do you end up having to like go back and go like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Cut that out. paint in there I don't like to overload the hopper if I end up like not using it all then I kind of got a, a wasted amount of paint so I just put in a couple of drops at a time uh, Jeff says farmers 15 and 1600s oh, okay that's oh, a bit different from your usual though isn't it because normally you're uh, you do a lot of Second World War Normandy things like that Civil War as well so it's something a bit different Okay, that's those primed and I'm out of paint, so that's great. Let me just give this a purge. Where's my water to clean? Drop everything. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water through that and I'll give it a proper clean out later on.
because it's primer and it's quite thick I'm gonna put a bit of neat cleaner in there and then I'm gonna hit this bad boy with a little bit of yellow these are dry already that's how that's how warm it is in the studio tonight they are dry just spilt neat cleaner all over the over the table that's about 20 pence worth of spillage never mind Expensive stuff that. That's why I use these little tiny dropper bottles and I just decant it in there and label them. It's a little bit easier to control. Reaver Wars. I've not heard of that. Is it, is it a, like is that a name of a game or is it a historical event? I've I've not heard of it. Here's me thinking that I knew my history. Not that well, obviously. Uh Kidoki. Vallejo's Gold Yellow from the game range. This is designed for airbrush, so it'll go through nice and thin. Again, I'm not going to water it down with any kind of, um, like, retarded medium or flow improver or anything like that. Uh, I want the pigment to be as strong as possible. If I dilute it down, it'll just be even weaker. So, a little dusting here. It's quite a bright colour. And because I've recently cleaned the whole model with alcohol, actually, it looks like it might be good to go in just one one shot. That is that is incredibly, <laughs> incredibly bright. And it die, it does right down with a little bit of seraphim over it. The trick is, is to not go mental with the seraphim. Ah, John has replied, uh, I love editing. I might have something like three hours of footage and then have to find the best 15 to 20 minutes for the episode. Wow. That is, that is some serious dedication. I find it difficult enough to, you know, sometimes write a schedule or do the thumbnails for my shows here on, on, on this live stream every week, yet alone do all that editing. That sounds like that sounds like a hobby in its, in its own. Cool. I'm just going to run a bit more cleaner and water through here again. And that should be my airbrush nice and clean. A bit of water. I like to fill the hopper right up with water. It gives it something to... Yeah, nice to really push it through. A lot of people um, it's like submerge their airbrushes actually into like a, a big bowl of water and don't have the space and, I, and I, I get messy very quickly so the less I can do that the better. Right, uh, oh Jeff goes on to say they used to steal each other's cows and kill each other over it, oh it looked like farm turf wars, crazy, crazy little reavers. So. Let's have a little look. I'll let that one dry a minute because that is going to take a few seconds there. Have a little look at these rocks and see if I can do anything, you know, interesting on this on this base here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this piece of paper because it kind of gets in the way. There we go. Off you over there. So I've got these three rocks. I don't have to use any of them or all of them or whatever. Just thought that they were some nice sort of shapes and sizes, and they've got some really nice. Um, so they're almost like like Martian sort of landscapes. The sort of things that you'd see on like pictures from the rovers up on Mars. We've got some nice patterns on the top there. Struggling for some zoom or focus. Um, so there's, there's some really nice things on here. If I don't use them on here, I'll certainly use them for my um, Skitari models. They're quite cool. Um, but I thought I could just kind of give them a bit of a scatter. Um, the obvious one here, of course, is something like this. I don't want to just kind of put one in the middle because it looks like a bit of a you know a lazy attempt at doing a base so you know can I make it like that there's some more rocks and stuff scattered around it put it in a slightly less obvious place perhaps I think this is probably the best way to put it up is, is this way here it's also got some nice texture on the top there I quite like that so if I was to you know pop this one here pop another one sort of there but already starting to look like that um, that I'm, I, you know, just trying to fill space, and I don't want it to be that way at all. So I could put one here, perhaps, and put a couple of scatter, scatterings of rocks or something in the middle. I also want to put some like, little rippers on there, the little tiny, you know, dog-sized aliens.
This looks quite cool, I suppose. Well, the rest of you think you could definitely do us some help on this one. Got some little rocks in here, of course. The little scatter rocks. put a TARDIS in there, you know, just saying. So I've got a couple of these. It's a cork. And if I wanted to, I've got a pot of sand somewhere. Not directly here anyway. I've got some bigger slabs of cork lying around somewhere as well. Hmm. Things to think about. I don't want to just make it look like I've just put something in the gap that's obvious. Although, obvious might be the best way to go. Something like this, perhaps. And a few rocks around it. Chalk that one off. See you later, mate. Um, I, I like that. That's kind of cool. Nothing overly, you know, sticking out the sides or anything, which some people like to do. Adds a little bit of something to the base, but, you know, sometimes it's tight to get things on, on a board, especially if it's a, if it's a big uh, model like this one. Um, just trying to find some nice shapes of corky bits here. I'll put these ones away. Quite like those. There's some good shapes there. I'll dot those around. Bit of super glue. And a couple of them, I say, they're like flat sides to them. So occasionally I just come in with a knife. I've got a little Stanley knife here. I just kind of just shave like a little chamfer into it. Watching my fingers, of course. And it just stops him looking so so flat on one side. Although I suppose if it was a part of a like a structure, like a part of a building, then you could say it's part of a, a sculpture or or even a part of a, you know the brickwork or something, a piece of masonry. That would definitely have tooled edges, wouldn't it? Um, but you know, I just kind of want it to be like normal, just sort of ground rocks, if you like. Um, yeah, I quite like that. I think I'm gonna paint them mostly before I glue them down, and then paint the area around them because it's just gonna be very difficult trying to get it in there. I have realised I've got a little bit of grey paint on the front of my trigon just here where I've been painting the um, the carapace. That's that's frustrating. I, I definitely can repair that nice and easily though, um, so I'll do that another time. That's yeah. Th this tail has been so difficult to paint. If I was building another one of these, this one was already built for me, um, and I, then I repainted it. Um, I would definitely um, leave it at least halfway and try and do the, the tail in, in, in sections and then glue it together at the end because it's it's very difficult. Um, okay, let's let's paint these rocks with. I'm gonna have a little look at these colours that I've got in here. Um, so I've got some Skaven Blight Dinge, which is quite a fun colour. I've got some uh, Storm Vermin Fur, and I think I want to like do the rocks and the sort of the mud around it in slightly different colours. And have the rocks maybe this sort of color and then the ground this sort of color and then dry brush them both up through the grays i'm literally spitballing i don't i don't really know how that's going to go i'm just going to have some fun i've got a good brush here it's my army painter brush This might be like totally the wrong colour to paint rocks. I think I'm going to need a bigger brush. <laughs> yep, that is that's not going to cut it at all. Do you know what? Let's give it a waz. A 
this is a particularly good brush for doing large surfaces on slightly smaller objects not even watering it down at this stage maybe I should maybe I should have a grey primer <laughs> would have made sense wouldn't it second let that dry it's it's so warm in here it's not gonna take very long at all taking it from the pot I've got a little bit of my palette over here here we go some really nice textures on this rock so, uh, I saw them the other day when I was coming home from work I was like oh got an idea for the show <laughs> and then I stole them it's just stones it's just stones It's like really fine, like you know, that you get on on slate. Really fine lines, grooves and stuff running down the side, and just pushing the bristles of the brush gently into it, not to damage the brush. Just trying to make sure that the colour goes in there. I've got all these little pieces, which I'm sure will be easy if I just painted them stuck on the base, right? He says. I mean, maybe not. What I'm going to do ever so quickly here, is I'm going to get my partner's hair dryer so that I can kill the microphone quick Now my feet are really warm. <laughs> oh, instant sweat. Okay. I can see you all complaining about the fact that I don't have the wasmatic graphics on the screen. We know the trouble I've had with the cameras lately. I didn't think it would be worth introducing yet another graphic. <laughs> wasmatic. <laughs> okay, let's get back to this one here. If there's anyone that wholesales um, those little paint pot paint pot mixes, um, I'd love to get into uh, Easy Eight branded Wasmatics. Okay, this is like the crudest painting I've ever done, but it is just kind of fun actually, just childish, ch childishly slapping paint on. for a minute, wash my brush out, and now I'm going to come back to the other piece, and I'm going to put a bit of seraphim on him, because I want to get that Tyranid skin colour that I've got. Paint is dried in my brush. Okay, I'm going to leave that the soak for a minute, put my yellow paint away. Let's get some seraphim. It's really candy yellow, isn't it, with a white undercoat. Really is quite incredible if I just push the lights away. 
really pops. Okay, because it's a wash, I'll bring my little piece of paper back in. There he is. Give him a gentle shake. I don't know if it's worth shaking or mixing washes. I mean, they must have a certain, you know, pigment to them, right? Like a little bit of colour, I suppose. Does it settle like like a sediment? Okay. The trick is is to keep it light and moving around and try to avoid it over pooling. I like it to be a bit of a filter really rather than a sludge. What's going on right now is actually quite good. Just a tiny bit more in a brush. Just making sure that I get all those areas because that yellow is so candy like it's such a bright color it really stands out if I miss a bit like for example I don't know how well it's picking up on the camera but you can see where I've really missed the teeth up here and it really stands out so just to be sure pretty much hit everywhere I'm not gonna bother with the tentacles because actually I'm gonna do those pink in a bit so yeah they're fine as they are Make sure that I tuck this colour right down, all in and around. And I'm going to let this dry for a little bit in the studio um, heat wave. And then I'll, I'll come back once it's kind of settled a little bit more and I hit it with the hairdryer. I don't want to hit it right now because it's so watery it will force it down and change the effect. But that's that's pretty cool like that. And then I'll, I'll do the little claws or teeth or whatever they are, those little spiky bits in there. I'll do those, the bone colour again. And I'll do pink and it'll just be this nice little feature that'll go plop right into that base and I'll just do some earthworks around that. That'd be fine. Cool. Right, let's come back to rocks. They are almost the same colour as they were when I picked them out of the ground. But like I say, the reason I primed them was so that paint would stick to them better. I didn't know if it was going to be an issue or not. So better be safe than sorry, right? Okay, and here's some rocks here. Come in which way I put them in. I think that one was kind of inside, wasn't it? In here, like this. And then, oh no, it was the other way. Was it the other way? I think I want the one with slightly better texture on it. I think I want that one leading to the outside because it'll be a bit easier to see. So if I did this, will he glue down like that? No, it needs to be down like that. Okay, cool. And then if I slot that one in like this, it gives a little something shouldn't be too hard to paint either okay so if I paint the tops of them with another coat these are the tops this brush maybe wasn't the best brush to use I've got a tank brush here let's give this one a go crazy painting the underside it is going to need um, a slightly less painted area surface area to um, to glue down on but also there's just no real need to paint I just want to make sure that I go around the edges a little bit so if you do see like a little bit of exposed underneath sticking out the side then it will um, it will show better just says try stacking them yeah okay get a little bit of paint on there You 
you see all these little details, all these little lines and grooves, I kind of want those exposed to the side of the base so you can see. It just looks a bit interesting as all. And I'll give them a good dry brush. I won't glue them down just yet, perhaps, so that I can dry brush them a bit more fastidiously. I'll leave those there for a second. I think I will give these a quick um, lick of paint now. I'm going to get my fingers absolutely covered in it. That's fine. Is this easy? No, it's not. Stuff it. Let's keep it nice and simple, yeah? Nice and easy. The paint is drying um, on the surface of my water pot. It's that hot here. Um, and it's creating a skin that sticks to the bristles of all my brushes. So they're going to need a proper cleaning out at the end of the show. Uh, that wash is almost dry there. That's cool. Right. It's time to do some stuff with texture paints. I think I would like to have like a, a, a difference in gritty and crackle. So I think I might do sort of like a, a, almost like a line across and, and one sort of side will be more gritty texture paint and then sort of down here will be more um, more crackle paint just because it's a nice large open surface area for it to be crackly so got to be really careful with this because it is way more efficient and be just generally better quality to pour it from the pot onto the miniature that you're going to do just so you can get loads of it on there to crackle but it does have a tendency to go splat and go kind of squirt out and like spatter and it will go all over your models so you've got to be really careful um, so a good shake and also I clean the, the, the little um, the spout out Right, well, let's just get on, shall we? Let's start putting some stuff down. I think that I should do that side gritty, just because it's going to be better. Maybe. Don't know why I was shaking it. <laughs> I like to use a palette to get this stuff out. I actually really like this palette that came from Citadel. I do like their tools. If a little bit overpriced, perhaps. But you know, if it works, it's worth it, right? So I'm not really putting it down with with an awful lot of thought, other than I've decided it's going to be in on one side of the base predominantly. Um, once it kind of goes down, it, it might start to build up a a better picture and I'll be able to see oh that that looks pretty cool or that doesn't really look right so I'll have you know probably a better idea of what I want as I move on I'm in danger of using quite a bit of this I think And it is absolutely okay to use a brush with this paint, even though it is a texture paint, it is fine. Just you don't want to be using your best ones, obviously. And you can water it down, it is still paint, it's just got something in it. And I don't really want to get this on the model. This isn't the sort of model that I want to have any sort of weathered um, effects or anything like that. I want it to be quite a clean looking model. Uh, and also I don't really want my the, the texture on this base to be like it's wet and I think that it would only kind of build up on the mod on, you know, on, on the creature if this was a wet scene. Which it isn't. I have just got a little bit on that claw, but I can scrape that off later.
just as I squeeze it down, pat it into place, it is starting to kind of squish more towards the tail under all these spikes. And this is the difficult bit here, is just trying to just shovel it forwards, just shovel it forwards, little bit by little bit. Once I've got it into the place that I want it to be in, then I can start making sure that I haven't got tool marks left in it. Because obviously where I'm touching it with the, um, the palette here, it is leaving little impressions in it. And um, well, I don't think that a trigon would leave palette shaped impressions in the dirt. Even if it is like dry land, where this tyranid is, I suppose it could be, you know, leaving like sand impressions or, you know, impressions in the dirt, like footprints in soil. I just, I just don't want it. Less to think about, I suppose. And actually doing the basing here has actually been one of my biggest concerns with this model is because th these tail spikes are so close to the base I've always known that getting stuff under there is gonna take more than just a quick slap it on technique Because doing basing techniques like this can feel like you don't have to have a steady approach to it and you can be a bit more haphazardous, actually you, you do need to have just as much focus as if you're painting detail for the very reasons of you know not getting it plastered all over the lovely paint job that you've done or ruining the effect you know. When it comes to the larger wider open spaces, yeah nice and easy. try and do is get like an amount on the end of the palette towards the towards the end and then I'm gonna try and just push it in so I can layer it up like that in front of where I want it to go make sure it's not gonna go on that claw and then stuff it in make sure I get it right up as close to that tail as possible I do have this slightly thinner end here where I can in a bit more precise but I don't want it to bulge up against the edge because it will look like uh, it's, it's pushing up against it uh, you know like I've painted around it I don't mind it looking like that she's creating a, um, a depression in the dirt but I don't want it to look like that I've shored it up against the edge Yeah, that's not looking so bad. I'll come along with a brush in a minute and I'll um, add some texture to the top to get rid of all my tool marks. Okay, we are pretty much at a place where we take a, a couple of minutes break. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can get a bit more under some of these claws. And I think I might just press on. I normally like to have a little um, little walk around, stretch my legs, but actually I'm kind of getting into the groove. I did a lot of talking at the beginning, so I might just carry on a little bit. Uh, John says, uh, that middle section looks like a challenge. I think I would really try watering that texture paint down. A few thinner layers might be easier. Or are those spikes raised higher? Um, well, these little spines around the sides that know that you can see here on the, on the small camera now um, that they're about three four mil off from the, the, the top of the base um, yeah I might give it a go with watering it down 
but I'm having some luck getting it into place now. So maybe, <laughs> maybe this is time saving. If I can get in just with one coat. I'll get this little bit done down here and then I'll give around here, maybe in there, maybe I'll give that a watering down. See how that works. Let's just see if I can get under here. Actually, there's a little bit of separation there from the colour inside the pot. Let's just um, scoop that off there. Like, that was like the medium that the, uh, the texture paint was contained in. I'll tell you what though, it is certainly a break from painting different types of grey lines. But that's for sure. And that is why I wanted to do this this week. Let's get a bit more on my palette here. She's certainly going to look really good. And one of my viewers actually gave me this model um, as, as a gift, along with a whole box of other stuff, just some tyrannies that didn't want to be owned anymore. Um, and obviously I was all too happy to um, receive them. I know Leslie's not watching this evening, but thanks, Leslie. It's nice to be able to do the model and the previous owner proud, you know. I think she's going to look really good. And sometimes, well, I've done a lot of learning on this model, and it's been quite a journey. And I, what's been keeping me going all the way through it is, is knowing what what she could look like at the end of it. Um, yeah, okay, picking up a bit of speed now. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a 10 minutes break. So, um, yeah, whatever it is that you're going to do, you should definitely take the time to go and change your water. So I'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye.
welcome back totally had my hands covered in paint just as the music was starting to finish i wanted to go grab myself a drink because it's still very warm in here mm. anyway hope your projects are going really well this evening would love to know how you're progressing what it is that you're working on if you've only just joined us um, and you're, you're working on something do let us know because that's what this show's all about if you're working on a project tell us about it here or pop on over to facebook and put a picture up in, in the it's called the mentions tab now it used to be called the community tab and um, it's called mentions because we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on discord at the end of the show so if you want to come and join us at the end you can so maybe if you're new here or if you just haven't got around to it yet maybe consider liking what we do following what we do and subscribing to the youtube channel because every little bit helps us kind of grow the community and the community is getting bigger um last couple of weeks i said that we've been 56 subscribers 57 subscribers we're at a firm and banners 58 so thanks very much we also hit 100 followers on facebook which is brilliant because it means i can view the insights i don't know what to do with them but they're there and i can see them so yeah thanks facebook um and uh, we've had a couple of new followers on, on instagram though i'm not very active on instagram at the moment because i haven't finished any of these hundreds of projects i've got going and i like to put at least finish stuff on there i think generally is, is kind of what i'd like to do uh, in the past i have put sort of like work in progresses but it's nice to have like a gallery of stuff i've done um and it also tells me how much i haven't been doing lately um so yeah you like follow subscribe that would be great uh, and join the rest of the team that'd be great thank you very much Anyway, um, been working fastidiously through the little break there. Um, I've managed to get all the way around the spikes on the tail with that um, uh, sort of textured paint stuff there. Jeff popped in in the middle of the break saying that uh, if you need rough dirt, uh, on your scatter terrain you can mix uh, you, uh, you can use coloured tile grout and mix it with sand the soil cat litter dump it on a spray it with a brought down PVA mix and it dries hard as nails uh, and obviously that is clean cat litter although I suppose everything adds a bit of texture um, yes I've not done that before and I don't necessarily um, n know how I feel about working with tile grout it's a new thing maybe I'll give it a go can you buy it in small quantities is it expensive is it easy to work with I'd love to know um, and if it's something that I can pot up in little things maybe i can manipulate it like i've been doing here because eventually i'm going to paint over most of my stuff anyway right so it doesn't matter what color it necessarily goes on um yeah would love to have a little experiment with that or if you're going to experiment with it uh, tell me I i'd love to know if i could get it into like a little pot or something this sort of size so that i can kind of manipulate it out with little tools then i don't have to worry about doing it on just like terrain pieces like these i can actually put it onto my models as well that'd be grand uh staff says uh, so i've learned a valuable lesson do not <laughs> overuse a heat gun on a hot wheels car hmm now a burnt out wreck rest in peace renault 5 turbo yeah dude <laughs> I mean, is it is it plastic? Did you do it on a plastic one? Because the metal one, I'm sure it'd be fine, right? But no, you're 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 gonna melt the plastic. Hair dryer, <laughs> hair dryer. We'll still get hot enough to melt something, so do be careful even with a hair dryer. But yeah, sorry, mate, that sucks. Is that one that I don't have to face now in in Gaslands? Have you have you killed my competition? That's that's great. Cheers. So anyway, let's move back over to the workbench and hopefully the camera's still working. Here is my trigon. And here's my hand. Yeah, things are going well today. Loving it. So it does feel like I'm not getting very far, but actually when you consider the amount of work that is required to get this texture paint underneath these claws, actually I'm really quite happy with the progress that's being made. Uh, John from Out of This World Models and Minis uh, did ask the question just before the break, saying like, are the spikes in the, in the middle of this sort of coiled tail bit, are they raised? Um, they are ever so slightly and it's probably a few more millimeters it will make it a little bit easier I don't know if that's by design like maybe the person sculpting it thought oh you know I'll, I'll give the person painting this a break I don't think that was their intention at all it just is the way it is um, so it will be a little bit easier to get it in there but it's still gonna take some focus and some tongue pokey outness like that <laughs> staff says nope metal body have you destroyed the metal body with a heat gun what's were you using a paint stripper you have to put a picture up on Facebook. Please do that. That uh, Yeah, thank you. I need that. <laughs> so here is the little piece that we were looking at on the Carnifex base. It's quite easy to still think that it's very, very bright and poppy because the tentacles around the outside kind of um, have a sort of an optical illusion. So if I kind of cover it over with my hand like that, that gives you a better idea of what the actual colour is like. If I now bring it up to the body of the Carnifex, you can see that it is still a little bit brighter um, and I don't really know why that is. It might be that I need to give it a slight 
going over with another coat because I want it to be as close as I can to the skin colour of the tyrannus because the idea in my head is that it all comes from the same genus if that's the right term to use so I'm going to get a little bit of seraphim here and I'm going to add just a little bit of um, water to it or um, even flow improver which will help kind of um, keep its water surface tension and water it down a little bit so if I just get my army paint brush here I'll get a couple of drops big drops obviously of seraphim I'm just going to put them into my little palette on the side over here get a few more from the bottom there there we go I don't need a lot because it's quite a small piece that I'm working on there wring the brush out and now I'm just going to put one drop of this in there and it's going to be nearly 50 50 maybe even at, at that ratio there we go. Flow Improver is marvellous stuff. Uh, it is designed for the airbrush. You can get stuff that is designed just for brush, um, but if it's designed for the airbrush, it will go on a normal brush. So consider that if you want to um, have smooth paint jobs. I don't know how it actually works, but it sort of helps keep the uh, surface tension of the paint and just allows it to transfer from the bristles to the plastic a little bit better. Keston's come to join us. Hi all. Hi mate, how's it going? I hope you're doing well mate. I used the word mate too much there, being very British for John. We do all say mate quite a bit. It is absolutely a correct stereotype. Chap. Cheerio. What? <laughs> and yes, and yes, Sir Stafford. You used to paint strip a gun. Well, yeah. John, have you got a round of applause emoji that you can stick in the live chat there for Stafford, please? That that would be great. Slow clap, everybody. Slow clap. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it bites that that has happened. Okay, that's actually quite a good coloration I've got going on there. I know that it will peel off a little bit, but I am going to just dip the bristles in just in some of those larger pooling areas just to help lift out some of the heavy stains. I don't want it to be too sludge washy. You, you know exactly what I mean. Um, because it can leave quite a heavy... Um, tide marks when it's dried when it starts to evaporate and peel away from the edges it will leave quite heavy stains I don't want it to do that that's pretty good though I like that okay let's let that dry in earnest over there <laughs> thanks John uh, oh Kiss says I'm just getting settled down from getting home from work well welcome back and welcome to the hobby thanks for coming along and you know, come straight to the show after work. You probably just want to chill out with a a beer or a beverage of your choice. <laughs> Stafford says, well, I was stripping paint and body rigidity. Well, do you know what? It would look good to have a little bit of post-apocalypticness on the, on the table, wouldn't it? Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to come back to here now. And I'm going to try to get this paint in under those spikes in here. This is going to be um, difficult, so I'm just going to crack on, really. <laughs> just as I suffer from that. <laughs> what? <a> body rigidity. <laughs> I think that's rigor mortis. <laughs> you probably need to see a doctor. Or a funeral director. Or a taxidermist. Okay. Do you know what? Before I do that, I should probably have a little go at seeing if I can um, do something with the texture here on the ground. So I'm just going to use my, this is my little mixing brush. This is my damaged brush that it doesn't really matter what happens to it. And I use this brush to kind of lift heavy quantities of paint or um, mix things or clean things in my airbrush. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a bit of water on the end of there. I'm just going to just soak the brush so it's nice and supple with a little bit of moisture in it. And I'm just gonna kind of go along a little bit and just shake the pattern up a little, take my tool marks out of it. I want to do this now before it starts to dry. 
because it has been set on there for a while. No particular rhyme or reason to what I'm doing, just... Yeah. Just giving it a poke. Soaking some areas with a bit more water than others because it might give some variety in the appearance once it starts to set. I don't know. This is one of the larger bases I've done with this. I mean, I've done some tests on large open bases before, but I've kind of carried on with experiments and not really seen how certain things turn out. So it'll be quite quite interesting base this. I wanted to do all of my models in um, crackle paint, but I sp you've got to give it some variety, haven't you? You can't go and do the same thing on everything, which is why some of my bases have got acid pools, some have got rocks, some have got crackle paint. Only some of them have got the sort of alien plant life on them. I think I will put some, you know, plants on this on this base. I think that might be its thing. Um, but what I want to do is I want to get some like aquarium um, plants, like fake plants, plastic plants. They are normally really, really expensive from the pet shops, at least here in the UK. Um, so I don't pick those up. But you can buy them from Amazon, and that, it just depends on what style you want. They're still quite expensive, but there there is a, a, a better range of prices out there. So I think I'm going to get some of those, so I can just like add a frond and a leaf into some of my vines, just to kind of, you know, add some variety to that particular type of terrain, and to also, you know, to the the regular external viewer, you go, oh, it's a plant because it's got a leaf, or you know, it's got whatever attached to it. And I think I might try and actually design some carnivorous looking parts to them as well. I think it'd be quite cool. Do you know, like in the original Raquel Welsh um, 10,000 BC or whatever the film was called, is it 10,000 BC? Um, or 100,000 BC? You know the film I'm talking about. She gets eaten by a giant wraparound plant, doesn't she? Yeah, cool. That sort of stuff. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a large dollop in and then I'm just going to try and scatter it around without knocking my tear of course and then smushing paint all over it. So I'm going to try and push that in a little bit further. And if I just get like a whole swathe of it in to this area sort of around the outside of the claws, I should then be able to kind of push it in there. You got a whole load of it there, Jeff. A whole load of what? You talking about tile ground? What, what are you talking about? Oh, one million BC. Oh, you're talking about the plants. Oh, you got you got um, aquarium plants. Oh, if yeah, if you're willing to let such an expensive and lucrative artifact out of your hands i'd love to would help myself um, and i will um maintain um i, I won't be so quick to steal everything is what i was trying to say i was, I was so busy trying to get it underneath uh, either get this paint under the claws there i forgot what i was actually talking about dropped me card live on the channel danny doesn't know what he's talking about I, it's totally unscripted. As me and Kyle all those months ago used to say, the rawness is what makes the channel. Plants. Uh, John says, uh, I'll be batch painting these Wolfguard Terminator models while my son paints a Death Guard bloat drone. Happy to teach my son how to paint. Ah, oh, have you got your, your your son into it? That's That's cute. That's cool. How old is your son, if you don't mind me asking? And obviously on, you know, live stream. Is he a slightly older uh, older son? Is he a, a youngling? Just getting into the hobby? Either way, nice to have someone join the ranks, right? Leftover plants from a Vietnam build. Okay. Well, if you don't want them, I'd love to come and help myself. Thanks very much. I 
might use a brush to push this up under as well. Because this has got such a thin um, edge, like pushing it in sometimes just kind of scrapes and chops it, doesn't really push it with much control. It's good for scooping and pushing down, but it's a little harder sometimes to kind of get it right where I need to. But it is going there quite easily, or easier than I thought anyway, which is great. And what's really nice is that flat surface of the base that I've seen for so long now is starting to disappear. And it's not just the character of the model that I like to see come to life for me, and this is why I do so, I like to do these crazy little um, things like acid falls on bases and plants and stuff. For me, for me it's, it's you tell the story of, of the scene that this model has because um, it's not just the model is it it's the little bit of ground that it stood on or flying over or whatever you know if, if there's a story going on this this is a snapshot into that story so it's not just the model coming to life it's the whole scene coming to life and I like it easy eight building scenes Yeah, I'm going to need to use the fine edge to poke that in or a paintbrush, I think. This is the hard bit. It's coming in at this angle. And this is why I've got paint on the model here. It's coming in at this angle now. It's really quite difficult. Seraphim sepia on the uh, plant life for the Carnifex is nearly dry. So I might give that a blast with the hair dryer in a minute. Okay, let's, um, let's come in with a brush and see if that changes things. Let's clean this off. Oh, just turned 16th last month. Well, a very happy birthday to your son. 16, what an age. And glad that he's getting into the hobby. So, you're painting Space Guard... Uh, sorry, Space Wolf, Wolf Guard Terminators. And he's doing Death Guard. Oh, he's going to suggest a brush. Yeah, you, you suggested it earlier, didn't you? So maybe I should listen to you because you know better than I do, actually. I'm going to use my um, army painter brush here. I don't know if I'm setting myself up for a fail and ruining this brush. I'm going to make sure that the bristles are nice and moist with a little bit of water in the palette there. But it's just a little bit narrower than the other one. If I'm gentle, I should be okay, right? Listen to your audience, Danny. They know what they're talking about. Hey, John. John. Hey, John. Hey, John. This works. <laughs> Shut up, John. <laughs> I don't mean it. It's really effective. Oh, it's so hot in here. What's that line from Aliens? I know what the line is, but Hudson says it. It's a dry heat. It's my favourite film of all time. I think that the the cinematography, the script, the acting, the special effects, the, the tone, the pace, everything about that film is absolutely on point. And it's easy to say, oh, Danny, you just like it because it's an action film and it fits a boyish charm. You're right, it does. And yes, it is a cool action film. But it's it's artsy, man. It's got so much going for it. So much so that my, my late cat, I named her after Newt, the girlfriend film. It's an incredible film. And I still think it urinates over the quality of most modern features and obviously is a great source of inspiration for the 40 key models that I'm painting. Although I have tried to stay away from that xenomorph style, although recently it has, as, as a style, has come back out into the um, the public commons, hasn't it? Um, which is a, a good thing, I think it's, it's great. Uh, Duncan Rhodes has recently done a little Hormogaunt in the xenomorph style, fantastic. It looks really, really good. Uh, Jeff says, yeah, use a damn brush. <laughs> yeah, it works, man. Who knew that painting would be easier with a brush? 
On next week's exciting episode, Danny uses a fork. <laughs> it is actually getting very difficult to get it in under there, and also the shadows are being a right pain in the backside. There is a certain element of flick that comes with a paintbrush. I'm, I'm, as I'm moving the stuff around, I'm desperately trying to control how much bend there is in the bristles to avoid that flick. So I'm kind of using it like a scalp, like not like a scalp, but like a spatula, just gently teasing it in, and keeping those bristles moist so that the paint doesn't ruin my brush. <laughs> Random applause from John, thanks mate. <laughs> Some other things that I want to do with um, the alien style or the, the, the Tyrion style. I'm going to try and avoid the use of the term alien because now I've been talking about aliens it makes it sound like I'm talking about xenomorphs. Um, but the, 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 the Tyrion style plant life um, is I want to use um, static grass. I've got a static grass applicator. I'm, I'm very capable of using it. It's, it's, um, uh, I, I get very good results with it. Um, I've just got to buy the right um, types of colours really. Um, I want to do some like normal grass on some other miniatures. I think it would be very cool. Um, and I actually want to produce some products. I think it'd be nice to have some things to sell. So I might sell some, like, you know, Easy 8 Ranges. It's an easy thing for me to produce. Um, but there are some wonderful colours out there. You can get all like the brilliant purples and pinks, but I think that's been done now, really. And as cool as it is, I I'd like to avoid that trend. Um, so I thought I'd try and stay with the, the, um, the style of, you know, like the dead earth approach. So I thought that, you know, really dark browns, and and black i thought i wonder if they do black grass as you can get it it is there there's like almost every color you can think of in static grass and i thought just the occasional tuft of black and brown grass might look really cool i have to get a bit more paint in now it's actually quite difficult now how's that doing a little bit of pooling just in the top there Okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. Put my finger right in it. Nice. I use the spatula to pull this um, paint out with rather than my brush so I don't ruin my brush. There we go. Time is moving on fast tonight. Um, like I say, it feels like I've not done an awful lot, but this is a delicate operation going on here. So I am quite chuffed with what I've achieved. Um, I will be on for a little while after the show tonight. Um, especially if there's more of you, I'll be on there for even longer. So you can come and join in the live video chat this evening on Discord at the Easy 8 After Party. Do come along. It's great, we have a little giggle out there at the end of the night, and I'll be carrying on with this particular project and, and chatting with you guys, um, and you can talk to me directly and kind of give me advice or tell me off for using a spatula too much. But sometimes, especially when the studio is hot, it's sometimes just nice to get off air quite quickly. But I'm really enjoying the progress here tonight, so I'll be on for a while. If you haven't already made a Discord account, it's really easy. Just follow the link in the description of this video. It will take you straight to Discord. Um, if you haven't got a sign in, it will take you straight to that sign in page. If you have got a sign in, it will take you straight to the Easy8 server. What more do you need? Gently does it going in quite well it's quite a gap up there I did try to take this beast 
off of the base but the glue the poly cement had done such a tremendous job that too much damage would have occurred um, so I just left it and knew that this would be the struggle that I would have to face at the time that's okay it's so hard to get to that one spot where are you come on now Danny did a shout sorry it's a nice texture coming up here where I've kind of used the brush and got rid of all those tool marks I'm happy with that that's good Hopefully I'll have a similar effect over here. Let's get the light in here. I'm slightly off camera now. When I say slightly, I mean right right off camera. I'm getting a hunch in my shoulder. <laughs> oh, Gasland question says, Jeff, are there helicopter gunships in the game? There are helicopters they um can, they do, they're not gunships I, as far as i'm aware and i will confirm this later unless someone else has got the rule book with them um as far as i'm aware they don't use guns they can only drop things because obviously they would be quite a punishing um thing in the game uh, you also can't win the race so that the, the, you can't like, just race ahead and just and just do it with a helicopter um and only one of the eight or nine teams can actually have them I mean, that being said, of course, you, you could quite happily play with them having guns, but as they are written in the rule book, they, they don't have guns. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. I couldn't get my words out then. Let's just wash this brush out a second. I've got one last little bit to do up around that tail. And then I'm just going to feather it out with some water so you don't get such a stark edge to where the paint kind of ends. And then I'm over to the crackle paint and put the um, the rocks in, which is great. Um, what, barrel bombs? Yeah, there's loads of different dropped weapons in the game. So there's this mines, there's cow traps, there's oil slickers, because it's predominantly a car racing game. Um, they've added a, a ton of additional things in there in the recent rule book update. Um, I've actually got the update book, so if you want, I can bring it around for you at the time I come to come and collect the Vietnam-style plant, um, plants that you've got. Um, so, yeah... What other sorts? There's loads of um, Gasland players that are watching this show right now. What other um, kind of droppable weapons are there in the game? There are throwables, Molotovs, grenades, and things like that. But there's droppable weapons. They're, they're a different thing. Um, throwables are crew throwables. The droppables are like launchers or deployers on the back of your vehicles, etc. Glue. There's a glue dropper as well. Uh, you can have gunships. Page 70 in the rulebook. Yeah, but I think they're only for Rutherford, the team Rutherford. Maybe they can have guns. This just comes off the back of a conversation I was having the other day about them, and I'm sure it was they can only have droppables. I could be wrong. Sounds like I am. That's okay. You can see here on the tail that um, I haven't finished painting all that grey yet, but when you start looking at the body of it, she's starting to look really good, and she's going to look absolutely amazing. A few people have actually come over to have a little look at her, um, viewers and not viewers, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, and, and they're all like, oh man, that looks really cool, and I am really proud of it. I'm not, I'm not the best artist in the world, by, by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I, I am really proud of how I've developed as a painter, even in just the last few months, just, just as really as starting with Easy Eight, you know, and I know it's been um, almost a year. I oh, know it has been over a year, isn't it? It's nearly 18 months. Um, but in, in that time, I've, I've come such a long way. And I, I look at my my recent models before the show, where I used to think that I was a really good painter, um, but yeah, I wasn't. I was lazy, is what I was. 
Um, yes, only Rutherford. Uh, Kessin said, oh, I thought they could only drop things. <laughs> Who? Rutherford is one of the teams in the, in the game. That's basically they are, they are sponsors um, and they all have different um, sort of skills if you like different sort of flavors uh, and rutherford is very militaristic so they have like contracts in the military so they get tanks and stuff like that and and big booms um and they have helicopters they're the only team that are allowed to have them anyone is allowed to be that team there's not like any limit on who, who can be that team um i personally don't play them kez does and has recently enjoyed playing games of gaslands with me and stafford um, and been shooting the absolute pants off us. Uh, in a racing game, guns get you far. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm just going to get a... No, do you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to leave it natural. I'm going to wash my brush out, get a bit of water in there. And I'm just going to feather these edges out here. Um, this is a little tip I learned from Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, it's a little YouTube channel. I say little YouTube channel, it's, it's huge. Um, and like when he's using texture paints, he's always encouraging you to feather feather out the edges of your texture paints, even if they're kind of um, going into nothing or if you're blending them into one another, feather them out and it just makes them look so much better. Let that bit dry a little bit harshly there. Still wet enough? Yes, it is. And what I'll do it, with the crackle paint is I'll basically I'll push the crackle paint right up to the edge of this of this next one of, of the of this of this particular texture paint I've got here and I'll blend them together and they should then have like a nice sort of termination soft termination point with each other can I just smush that large lump down there is it still wet enough yeah it is it's just starting to dry a little bit and I can soft that down with a brush now uh, Staff says they can have guns and they can drop as many drop weapons as they like. Also, drop weapons do not take a build slot. They have four build slots, so they can take guns as well. Okay, there you go. Gunships are a thing. It's just that not everyone's going to have them. Okay. Wonderful. So... That is that paint done. Oh my goodness, that, that took some, some effort. I do actually probably should just try and push it up a little bit more in this little bit just here because he's come away from the tail a little bit there or I haven't quite got it in there yet. So back with a bit of water on the brush and I'm just going to use the brush to manipulate what's already there and just get it in up close. So, John, do you and your son both play 40k? Is this, is it, uh, you say that he's just getting into it. Is he actually looking to play or is he just enjoy painting? And do you get much time to paint? Oh, sorry, play? Because I know that you obviously do your show and, and that you that you paint a lot. I don't know if you, if you get to play a lot. No guess, put it down. <laughs> Bit too much texture paint there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Oh. My headset's making my head sweaty and itchy in this heat. Heh. <laughs> 
got it right all over that claw. Let me just wash the brush out and I'll just, with a wet brush now, just <laughs> remove that stain. That's better. Idiot boy. Oh, so difficult. It's been a nice challenge, though. I've enjoyed it, and that's a good thing. Again, just softening out the edges that termination line. I like using the term termination line, don't stop me. It sounds cool, right? Right, there we go. I think that probably is getting us quite close to the end of the show, right? And then I'm going to have one stone here, and the other stone here, and then like Jeff says, I might get the other one and stack them maybe, see how they go. I'm going to play with them a little bit more. Got some more scatter rocks. I got some sand somewhere. I'll go and dig that out somewhere. It's somewhere down in a morass of things down here. Right. Let's have a little look at this little effort here. So, I'm going to be making those tentacles go pink. There's a little bit of wet left in the middle in there. So, I'm going to kill the microphone one more time. Um, but before I do that, let's just put the little reminder up that it is coming to the end of the show. Kill the microphone, Danny. There we go, that's nice and dry. Oh, so hot now. Uh, so yeah, the tentacles are going to go pink. It does have these little... Um, I don't know what they are. Like, Are they claws that are coming up the side here? What do you think that they would be? This, this sort of section here, I'm going to leave like the yellow flesh. I'm going to have the teeth, uh, or whatever they are, at the claw colours. The tentacles will be pink. Are, are these going to be claws as well? I think they would be, wouldn't they? Or would they be the grey colour of the carapace? What do you think would look good on them? Ask the community. Keston saying, <laughs> tank first. Yeah, but we know you're going straight for the helicopter there after, right? The tank is a concern, though. Uh, oh, John says, uh, he's learning the rules. That since we live in different states, we can only really play at Christmas and in the summer. Oh, fair enough. Sorry, I didn't realise that you um, that you live uh, with such a distance between you. Well, it's nice to know that you've got someone to play on those occasions and that you're learning and learning the game. Um, perhaps one day I might be able to uh, come over to the States. I've not been there before. Um, so maybe I'll come on over, say hi, drop in, and we'll have a little game perhaps. That would be quite nice. Easy A goes abroad. That would be wonderful. Um, I built a 4 by 8 table in the basement so I can teach you while still having a nice battle. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> Helicopter tank, I guess. No. Yeah, I, I, I have... I'm graceful having a little bit of space in the house big enough to actually have a, an 8x4 table but uh, with a little bit of moving around and, and some housemates leaving now it's just me and my partner live here we've changed the living room around a little bit so it's, it's very difficult to have a 4x8 table um, and a 4x8 table doesn't really it's not always necessary so I cut it down to a 4x6 and, and that's that's more than enough um, and a friend of mine or Dave who sometimes watches the show here I don't believe is watching this evening hi Dave if you are watching uh, we have been talking about um, like building a table he's very good at uh, working with his hands and building things and I've had some design ideas and we've been kind of toying with the idea when we've got some spare time to actually build like a proper gaming table like the really cool bespoke models that you see out there on the internet that cost thousands but seeing if we can do it ourselves um, turn into a bit of a project and that'd be really cool and he's also currently building himself a man shed uh, in his garden um, out of old oak doors and apparently it's supposed to be really I've seen pictures of it it looks really cool but I haven't been to see it yet and he wants to have like a man cave in his garden which would be great uh, Kessin says that would be cool no so what you've done there is you've influenced Kess haven't you it's not what we want 
what does everybody think? Do we think that these little bits here should be cl claw colours? Should they be the grey carapace colours? Or should they be parts of the tentacle? Do you see them? These little lines look like... I don't know. They do look like claws, I suppose. I've not really seen them before. Uh, I've managed to colour it properly. It kind of stands out a little bit. Don't know what to do. There's a little bit of um, sprue left on there. I'll cut that down in a minute. Do you know what? I'll do it now. Here we go. Watch Danny cut his thumb open live on the internet. I told you I rushed the model, didn't I? <laughs> claws, says Jeff. Claws. Okay. It will be claws. This will be one of the things I'll be painting in uh, Discord this evening. I'll be painting the uh, tentacles pink. I'll be painting all the claws on there. Going to give it a slight dry brush with the original yellow, just to bring those edges up, just to kind of bring that glow back to it, but whilst keeping that filter colour in there. Um, and that's how I've achieved everything on, on all the other models as well. Um, and with a few minutes to go, perhaps that's something I can do now. So, which brush would I like to use for today's dry brushing? I'm going to use a nice soft brush. That's got a stiff bristle. Don't want a stiff bristle now. This one here has got a nice little sable to it, and it, though it's a short bristle brush, it's really soft and gentle. Could do with a bit of a cleaner, you can see there's some dry paint bits in there, so I'll, I'll be cleaning that out in Discord tonight as well. Let's get that yellow. Yeah, they look like claws, yeah, teethy claws, yep. Yeah. I've got a couple of different yellows, I wonder if any of these would be good for dry brushings. I oh, know, it's a bit darker, I wanted a brighter colour. Got a moon yellow, but that is too bright. I've actually tried that in the past. Too bright. It's okay. Going back the same colour is fine. Oh, uh, everyone's saying claws. Yep, yeah, okay. Claws it is. Just a couple of drops in the palette. That's all I need. And if you remember last week, I was talking about dry brushing actually is a bit of a misnomer. You don't want to be dry brushing. You do actually want it to be damp. It's like to have a moist bristle. Um, the fact that this is a, an airbrush paint and it's it's very very runny will help with that. So I've got a bit of a moist brush going on now, ever so slightly damp. Pick up all that paint that's in there, saturate those bristles, it bristles in it, bristles, and then remove as much of it as I can onto this tissue. on the back of my hand to make sure there's no large stainy bits and then ever so gently it's going to be running down picking up those edges as I go some areas are a little darker than others so I just spend a bit more focus on those areas not a massive fan of dry brushing and that is because when I used to paint before the show it was my lazy go-to technique which held me back I relied on it too heavy so I've got a, a fear of it almost so I'm trying to push myself back into the realms of dry brushing there we go that is looking pretty good that's cool oopsie dizzy and then that would just be glued in um, underneath the base pink tentacles claws etc and then lots of you know textured earth style things around it and some scattered rocks um, I might try and do like a cracked earth thing around it to make it look like it's bursting out of the ground um, I don't really know how I'm going to achieve that I'd like it to make it look like the, the large slabs of soil have finally pushed up rather than having like a dry um, 
like riverbed style crack death like slabs of soil coming up so i'm not sure how to do that that might be a bit of a pipe dream at the moment we'll see what happens if you've got any ideas on how to achieve that i'm all ears right just cleaning this brush out that is a very yellowy yellow it seeps everywhere and it's time to come away from the workbench and the camera gods have been on my side again ah oh, john says thanks for a great time would love to join the discord but have some family stuff coming up no worries john thank you so much for coming along uh, you are the first person from the states who has been from end to the end of the show so thank you very much for coming along it's been lovely to spend some time with you and i uh, look forward to catching up with you in the near future um wicked right let's let's come away from here let's come away here we go well it feels like slow progress, but actually knowing the amount of work that I had to do to get all of that um, texture paint in around that tail, that, that's that been really good progress. I've still yet to paint it. That's its own separate thing, but I think it's going to be a little bit easier than trying to shove like sandy paint into that, into that area. It's covered the base, which is which is great. It's a really good start. Um, so this evening, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put um, the other texture paint, the crackle paint, on the rest of the area, and then overnight that I'll have plenty of time to dry, which will be grand. I'm going to paint the tentacles up on here and the little teethy claw bits on it if I've got some time as well, um, and then get that fitted into place. It's all coming along very nicely. A little bit of work to do on the rocks, so I'm going to make sure that I paint those up. And I have decided during the break with these little um, cork rocks, I think it is going to be easier to get a better effect on them. To paint them by hand, I'm just going to hold them with a pair of tweezers, which is downstairs. I'm going to hold them with a pair of tweezers and just so that it's nice and easy to paint them. And then I can just drop them in where I want to. That's what I've done with the cork rocks in the past when I've done little... Um, a uh, little diorama featurettes and on some of the um, the Martian landscapes I've done so I've actually painted them individually and then plopped them in so yes that, that'll be what I do it's been a great evening tonight um, and it's been a, a really nice chatty live chat Chimera War Gaming says good evening hi Chimera War Gaming I, I hope you, um, uh, that you get a chance to see the show if you've only just come into the show now we are coming to the end of the show um, but it's really nice to have some more viewers pouring in it's, it's been a really lively um, unusually lively and chatty live chat this evening thank you very much for coming along um, I'm so sorry if you have come in right at the end um, we are about to finish but you can always watch back in retrospect um, and it's always good to, to see you coming up in the, in the chat there um, yes look you should definitely uh, find us on Facebook you should definitely find us on Instagram and if you really like what we do here at Easy Gate then you should uh, probably like follow and subscribe please do subscribe it really helps me feel good about what I do um, it helps me stay enthusiastic and it does help the channel to grow the more people that subscribe the more it gets known out there so share 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 oh come here walking says I'm sorry but I'm a hospital I am so sorry to hear that I do hope that you are well and that you are not so poorly um, a, a swift recovery to you and i hope you feel better soon no matter what your ailment um, and i'm glad that you have tuned in to us um to kind of make yourself feel better that's that's lovely to know um but do get out of hospital as soon as you can that'd be great as long as you're being looked after don't just kind of walk away that'd be bad i'm rambling <laughs> anyway this has been easy eight i've been danny because it says it right down there at the bottom of the screen come and join me over at discord right now uh, just a quick hello Ah, quick hello. Uh, yeah, come and join me and the rest of the community on on, uh, on Discord at the um, Easy Eight After Party on Discord. That'd be great. The link is just down there. And, and I will see you next week at the same time. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, until then, stay safe, be kind, and keep on painting. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves now. Bye-bye. I mean, who knew it? That using a paintbrush in paint was going to make it easier. Thanks, John. <laughs>